Hello beautiful friends, my name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. Today we are going to talk about 23 books I need to read in 2023. So by now you will have likely already seen the authors that I intend to try in 2023 in an effort to curate my TBR just a little bit. You will have also likely seen the series that I'm in the middle of and so in an effort to further lower and curate my TBR a lot of the books on this list are actually books that are going to complete or catch me up on some of those series that I'm in the middle of which is not only going to lower the amount of books on my TBR but it's also going to lower the amount of series that I'm in progress with and it's going to make it a little bit less stressful to start new series in 2023. There are also definitely a handful of other non-series related books in this list as well. But regardless of the reason, these are all top priority books that I plan to read in 2023. So we're going to go ahead and jump right in. The very first book that I have is The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. I read In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead and loved it. It was definitely a top tier dark academia book in my opinion. And since The Last Housewife was released, it has received extremely high praise, especially from booktubers that I love and trust. I believe that this follows a cult and that it gets very dark and gruesome, that there are a lot of trigger warnings and I really don't need to hear anything more about it. It is Ashley Winstead, it is dark and gruesome and my twisted little soul just absolutely needs those types of books in my life. So this is absolutely a high priority book for me in 2023. I admit that I'm a little nervous because I did attempt to read a contemporary by Ashley Winstead and it didn't go so well. I DNF'd it. And I'm really hoping that I don't have the same issues with her thrillers as I did with this contemporary. I'm hoping that I can trust her as a thriller suspense author and don't have to worry myself with her contemporaries. So we're gonna see. This is a highly anticipated book for me. I really truly believe that I'm going to to love it and so I'm excited to get to it. Next I have The King of Crows by Libba Bray. This is the fourth and final book in her Diviners series. I just need to go ahead and read it and get it out of the way. I did read the third book this year and it was great. It was one of my favorites in the series. I feel like the series has just gotten stronger and stronger with each and every book. If you're not familiar, The Diviners is set in the 1920s primarily in New York and it follows a group of teenagers who all have special abilities and there is this kind of malevolent force. I still don't entirely understand who the King of Crow is and what his purpose is and why he is doing what he is doing or what his ultimate end goal is. But in the fourth and final book, I feel like you're gonna get a lot of those answers and you're gonna see the Diviners fight the King of Crows. And I'm excited to get to the conclusion of this book finally in 2023. I also really need to go ahead and read A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Mass. So this is the fourth full book in her A Court of Thorns and Roses realm. I believe that this is considered a separate series because it does follow different main characters than her A Court of Thorns and Roses books did. But you really can't read that second series without having read Agatar because a lot of what happens in these books are going to hinge on what happened in that first trilogy. So I do consider it kind of like a continuation of that trilogy. As of right now, there is only one book out. I don't really know when the second book plans on being released. So I want to go ahead and read this and get caught up so that when the next book does come out, I am ready to read it and I don't fall further behind in the series. In a similar vein, I need to read House in Sky and Breath by Sarah J Maas, which is the second book in her Crescent City series. This is a chonky baby, so I'm really going to need to have the time to dedicate to this, and I just really don't know when that's going to happen, but I need to read it so that when the next book comes out, I am ready. I don't want to keep falling behind in these series that are actively still ongoing, especially series by my favorite authors. I loved House of Earth and Blood immensely. Bryce and Hunt, I think, have become my favorite couple out of all of Sarah J Mass's series. I just loved Hunt and Bryce so much. I love the complexity of House of Earth and Blood. This was Sarah J Mass's very first foray into adult fantasy and I feel like she did it very very well. I've heard a lot of mixed things about this story. A lot of people seem to be very disappointed but I'm not really going into it with any particular expectations whatsoever. I don't even know what the crux of the book is going to be, like the overall plot that it's going to be following, but I'm here for the ride. I really love the characters and I want to see where it goes. So I definitely want to get caught up in this series in 2023. Another series that I need to finish desperately is the Nevernight Trilogy by Jay Kristoff. This is Dark Dawn. This is the third and final book in the series following Mia Corbeer, who is an assassin. I love Nevernight and God's Grave fiercely. Jay Kristoff is an amazing writer. I absolutely love his humor and his snark. He is so dry and he's got this just dark sense of humor that speaks to my soul. And I don't know why I'm putting off reading this. I don't know if I'm nervous about it, like nervous about what is going to happen at the end of it, because I have a feeling it's going to tear my heart out. Or I don't know if I'm just 
prolonging it so it doesn't end. But I need to go ahead and get it done. I need to say goodbye to the series and be able to open myself up to new series in the future. This is the Illumicrate edition. It's got this beautiful Mr. Kindly on here. Oh, it's so, so stunning. And I definitely just need to read this one. Next, for sure, I need to read Running Wild by K.A. Tucker. This is the third full book in her Wild series. It is going to follow a different main character than the main characters that we were following in the first two full books and the novella, but it is all set in the same world and it's considered part of the same series. If you're not familiar, The Simple Wild is probably one of my favorite romances of all time. It was a hate to love grumpy sunshine romance that's set in Alaska and it just did everything right in my opinion. It was beautiful. It was touching. It was also hard hitting. It deals a lot with grief and loss and mistakes and growth. I just feel like it had a lot of so many wonderful messages in there and I've absolutely loved everything else in the series. There was a second book that followed the progression of Jonah and Kala's relationship, which was fantastic and unique. I really don't feel like you get a lot of that in romance stories these days. You don't see what happens after the honeymoon phase is over. And then there was a sweet little novella set at Christmas time that was just pure cozy bliss. It was everything that I could have wanted in that novella. I was crying through it several times. I'm crying just thinking about it because it was so wonderful. I loved it so much. And I cannot even tell you how much I'm looking forward to reading Running Wild, even though it follows a different character. So this follows Marie, who is a local veterinarian, and she was actually pining for Jonah. She had a long time crush on him. And so she's kind of like moving on. And this is her love story. And I'm super excited to see it. I just love this world immensely. I will read anything that K.E. Tucker decides to write in this world. In fact, I would really, really love if she took this and made it kind of like a True North series by Serena Bowen, where it's all set in the same world, but you're following different characters and you're following their love stories. I would love to see that so much. So as you can tell, I'm just gushing. I'm beaming. I just want to read this book. Um, I'm also a little bit nervous to read it just because this could also be the very last book in this series. But reading these books is truly like returning home. This is one of the only series that I really feel that way about. So I just, I need to go ahead and read this book in 2023. I also need to read Hero of Ages by Brandon Sanderson. This would complete the first era of the Mistborn trilogy. I know that there is a second era which is set many years in the future and follows a different set of characters. I have yet to decide whether I'm going to read that series. I don't think so. I don't think I am for a couple of reasons. First, I don't love this Mistborn trilogy like everybody else does. I'm not as impressed with it as everybody else is. Not because I don't think it is well written or complex because it certainly is. Brandon Sanderson is obviously a very talented writer and the stories that he weaves are intricate but they are so intricate that they are tedious. These books were so long and drawn out and there were just as many places in these books that I was bored as there were places that I was interested and that doesn't make for a very positive reading experience for me. So I want to go ahead and like revisit books one and two via summaries and then get into the Hero of Ages and then I will probably call it quits on Mistborn. That's especially true because I've heard that Mistborn Era 2 is very very different. Um, I believe it's set in like this western theme and it's completely different characters and a different vibe. Like I think it's going to be a little bit more humorous which I don't mind but I feel like I don't need to read it especially if I don't love the Hero of Ages, I'm not going to force myself to read the second era of Mistborn. I will be giving Stormlight Archives a try by Brandon Sanderson. I will read the first book in that at some point and possibly continue on with him and the Cosmere in that way, but I'm not going to force myself to read the second era of Mistborn since I didn't love the first era of Mistborn. So I'm going to go ahead and read the Hero of Ages. I'm going to get it out of the way, call it good, and I will eventually start Stormlight Archives. And then I do want to read Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. That sounds like it's going to be a great science fiction and I'm willing to give that a shot as well. If I don't like any of them, Brandon Sanderson might just not be the author for me and that's okay. He doesn't have to be for everybody. So we'll see what I think. So I do have two books that I want to talk about, but they're part of the same series, so I'm almost tempted to consider them one. I need to read Cress and Winter in the Lunar Chronicles. I read Cinder several years ago, and it blew me away how much I enjoyed that book. That was a story that had been out for years, and I had never had any interest in reading that story. And then I read it, and I loved it. It was so great. And then I read Scarlet and really enjoyed that as well. But it has been a couple of years since I've read that. I don't remember anything that happened in these books, so I'm going to definitely need to revisit them. And I'm hesitant to let any more 
more time pass between when I read those books because this is a young adult series and as I find myself moving away from that age range overall not just with contemporaries now but with science fiction and with fantasy which used to be like the top fantasy age range that I would go for now I'm moving purely towards adult I don't want to miss out on my opportunity to finish this fantasy so I would really like to go ahead and just knock out both of these books in 2023 if you're not familiar Cinder was a futuristic sci-fi Cinderella retelling and the other books in the series are also futuristic retellings of other fairy tales so Scarlet was Little Red Riding Hood, Winter I believe is Snow White, and Cress I think is Rapunzel. I just remember enjoying the first two books a whole lot and I want to go ahead and continue with the series. I don't want to stop so I'm going to go ahead and get both of those books out of the way in 2023. I also want to go ahead and read Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. This is the second and final book in the Bellinger Sisters duology. I read It Happened One Summer earlier this year and I really enjoyed it. It was my first ever experience with Tessa Bailey and it made me want to continue with her as an author and that's one of the reasons why I also have window shopping on my December TBR. So It Happened One Summer follows the Bellinger Sisters and that one it follows Piper and at 28 years old she was basically famous for being famous kind of like Kardashian-esque she was like a social media influencer and things like that and she's got like this famous wealthy stepfather who's always kind of bailing her out but after this really loud raucous party she's been in trouble one too many times and her stepfather is not going to accept it anymore so he decides that he's going to cut her off in an attempt to show her some responsibility he sends her to Westport Washington which is where their late father was from and he had actually owned a bar at the time and so that dive bar still sits in their father father's name and it is basically theirs and then she meets Brendan who is kind of running the bar he is definitely the grump in this grump and sunshine kind of romance and you're following them as they come together and then in hook line and sinker you're following Piper's sister Hannah and you're following her romance with Fox who is a friend of Brendan's and also somebody who is a crab fisherman along with Brendan as well so I am definitely interested in just finishing up this duology like I said I really enjoyed it happened one summer I enjoyed it more than I thought that I was going to and I'm interested to see what hook line and sinker does although I've heard a lot more mixed things about that one another series that I only have one book left in and I'm just not feeling it like I don't even know if I want to continue but I need to continue just so I can finish the series is the Remnant Chronicles. I have the Beauty of Darkness which is the third and final book in that series and I just need to finish. I've read the first two books in this trilogy obviously. I mean it was okay. It's never been a series that has blown me out of the water but when I'm reading them it's a good time overall. I don't really have anything against them but the further and further I get away from this series the less interested I am in it and that's just kind of where I am. Like I'm totally fine never knowing what happens at the end of the series but since I have this book I want to go ahead and complete it just to go ahead and do it. So I'm going to try my best to get this out of the way in 2023. In a similar vein, I also need to read The Raven King, which is the fourth and final book in the Raven Boys cycle by Maggie Stiefvater. The Raven Boys is kind of a magical realism series. So this follows our main character, Blue Ivy, and she was born and raised into a house of clairvoyance, but she is like the only non-psychic among them. Even though she doesn't have psychic capabilities, she does have the ability to magnify the powers of others. She is near them. And in the very first book, because she's able to like magnify the powers of the people that she lives with. She's asked to accompany them on St. Mark's Eve every year to the Corpse Road where the spirits of the soon to be dead will pass them. So these are not actually dead people yet. They are soon to be dead. And Blue can typically never see them. But on this one journey, she does see one of them. His name is Gansey. And Blue's mother says that the only way that this would have ever been possible is if Gansey is her true love. But the catch here is that Blue has always also been told that if she ever kisses the true love of her life, he will die. And then of course, you're following Gansey and his three friends, Ronan, Adam, and Noah. They are all members of this very prestigious private school. However, Gansey is not really concerned with his education. He is more concerned with this dead Welsh king named Glendower. Gansey believes that Glendower's tomb is located on a ley line. These are invisible lines connecting spiritual places and they have like a ton of energy. And there's always been this myth that if you find Glendower and wake him, you will be granted one wish. And Gansey is determined to find Glendower and get that wish. Eventually Blue ends up meeting Gansey in the group and she's kind of caught up in their quest as well and because of her direct knowledge of like the spiritual world she starts to help them on their quest and it kind of goes from there. I read the very first book of this way back in 2018 and over the past few years scattered here and there I have read the other two. I need to go ahead and read the fourth one because this is another series that I'm quickly losing interest in. I don't really care to find out 
what happens at the end of it. I often find the books sometimes confusing. That's possibly because I was always listening to them. So I feel like if I read The Raven King physically, I might get a little bit more out of it. And so that is my plan. I'm only one book away. No sense stopping now. So that is definitely a plan for 2023. I also need to read Capturing the Devil by Carrie Maniscalco. This is the fourth and final book in her Stalking Jack the Ripper series. All of these are historical books set in the 1800s and you're following Audrey Rose and Thomas Cresswell. They are spunky teenagers who are always getting into some kind of mischief, trying to solve these mysteries of the day. In the very first book, you're following Audrey Rose as she's trying to discover who Jack the Ripper is. And then you follow her finding Dracula and now of in this, The Devil, which I believe this is set in Chicago. And she's talking about The Devil in the White City, H.H. Holmes, who was like America's very first serial killer. This is yet another series that the longer that I move away from, the less interested in it I am because I was never fully connected to the series in the first place. This was never a series that I was fully absorbed in or invested in or emotionally connected to and so as time passes my interest in continuing completely wanes and so because I only have one book left and I don't want it out there languishing on my TBR I need to go ahead and just finish it so that's why I picked it up during a book outlet sale. I have it it's here that means I 100% need to read it in 2023. I also want to read the third and final book in the Unsub series by Meg Gardner it's called The Dark Corners of the Night. What I really like about the series by Meg Gardner is that her books are all based on a notorious serial killer. The first book was based on the Zodiac Killer. The second was based on Ted Bundy. And I honestly am not really sure if the third book is based on any serial killer. If it is, I'm not really familiar with who it is supposed to be based on. But I really, really enjoyed Unsub, book number one. I didn't really love the second book nearly as much, but it was still interesting and engaging. And so I'm excited to go ahead and read book number three and finish out this trilogy. I don't believe that there are any more books scheduled in this series. I could be completely wrong and if there are more I will definitely read them in the future but for now reading this third book will complete or catch me up on this series and I need to go ahead and get it done. Another book I need to get to in 2023 is Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Y'all know that Taylor Jenkins Reid is one of my favorite authors of all time and I've been pretty good about reading her new releases as they have been released ever since reading The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo which blew my flippin mind. Carrie Soto is going to be the last book that is set in this connected world. Um, all of of these books follow very different characters but there's always some reference to the other books or some common characters that you see kind of woven in and Carrie Soto is going to be the very last one that that happens with. Carrie Soto is actually a famous tennis player. She does make a cameo in Malibu Rising. I would say that she plays a very small part but it was pivotal to some of the things that actually happened in that book and she wasn't really a likable character so I'm really interested to see how Taylor Jenkins Reid takes her story in this but I trust Taylor Jenkins Reid completely. I'm sure that I'm going to absolutely love it. I used to be a really big tennis fan back in the day and even still today I would go watch a tennis match if somebody invited me to one. So I'm absolutely excited to get to this one in 2023. One that I'm very nervous about is The Only Plane in the Sky, An Oral History of 9-11 by Garrett M. Graff. I was lucky enough to visit New York in September and I went to the 9-11 Memorial, which as you can imagine was a very sobering and heart-wrenching experience. I was basically close to sobbing the entire time I was there. It's, it's hard for me to even talk about 9-11 or my experience at the museum. Um, it's one of those things that you even mention it to me and I just start tearing up like I'm tearing up right now. I of course wasn't affected by 9-11 in terms of the fact that I didn't live anywhere near New York and I didn't have any friends or family members that were there in New York but it was a day that deeply affected and changed our country and I feel like because of that I need to read this book but I know that I'm going to be like an emotional mess throughout the entirety of the time that I read it and I totally plan on listening to the audiobook because I feel like that's going to be quite um, an intense reading experience and I know that some of the narrators in there are the actual victims sharing their own stories. And so this is just one that I need to be in the right mindset for. I need to be in the mood to be totally devastated, which when does that ever happen? But I think that it's going to be an important read and I need to go ahead and listen to it in 2023. Next, I need to go ahead and read The It Girl by Ruth Ware. This is her newest release that I haven't yet gotten into because I did read One by One by Ruth Ware earlier this year and so when this came out I wasn't really ready to jump into another Ruth Ware but Ruth Ware even though she's hit or miss is still one of my go-to like thriller suspense novelists and so I want to go ahead and read this because that would mean I would be caught up on all of her releases and so whenever she comes out with another one I could be ready to read that. So this says April Clark Cliveden was the first person Hannah Jones met at Oxford. Vivacious, bright, occasionally vicious and the ultimate it girl she quickly pulled Hannah into her dazzling orbit. Together they cultivated a group of devoted and inseparable friends. Will, 
Hugh, Ryan, and Emily during their first term. By the end of the year, April was dead. Now a decade later, Hannah and Will are expecting their first child, and a man convicted of killing April, former Oxford porter John Neville, has died in prison. Hannah is relieved to have finally put the past behind her, but her world is rocked when a young journalist comes knocking and presents new evidence that Neville may have been innocent. As Hannah reconnects with old friends and delves deeper into the mystery of April's death, she realizes that the friends she thought she knew all have something to hide, including a murder. So it sounds like this might be Ruth Ware's attempt at dark academia and I'm here for it. We're gonna definitely read this in 2023. Another one that I want to go ahead and read is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. So this is another dark academia type story. I believe it is set at Yale and it deals with like secret societies and magic and things of that nature. This is an adult novel. I believe it's Lee Bardugo's first adult novel. I purchased this special edition and another special edition as soon as it came out but I haven't read it and the second book is actually coming out in 2023 and so before I go ahead and grab the sequel I wanted to read this first because all Obviously, I need to read it to determine if I want to continue in this series. So I want to go ahead and read this and be caught up for when the new release comes out and then I might try to get to the new release in 2023 as well if I decide that it is a series that I want to continue with. I also need to read The Atlas Paradox by Olivia Blake. This is the second book in The Atlas Six. I don't think it's a duology. I think it might be more. I think there might be more releases but I want to go ahead and read The Atlas Six to see if I want to even bother continuing. I got these beautiful stunning editions from Illumicrate. I read The Atlas Six earlier this year and I didn't love it. It was supposed to be like this dark academia type story but I didn't really get the vibes that I wanted from it. It was all very very pretentious and super sciency and theoretical and a lot of it just went over my head and I didn't enjoy my reading experience like I wanted to enjoy it. I plan on reading this one physically to see if I get more out of it, to see if I'm able to understand it a bit more, to see if I can maybe connect with the characters. And if I do, then I will definitely continue if there are in fact more releases. But this would definitely get me caught up in the series and it would allow me to make an educated decision on whether I do want to actually continue. So that's why I have added this to my list for 2023. I already mentioned this a little bit earlier when I was talking about Hero of Ages, but I do want to go ahead and read Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. So this is a science fiction novel by Brandon Sanderson and it has really intrigued me ever since I first heard about it and it's been on my radar. It sounds like something I might enjoy a little bit more than the Mistborn series. I'm not sure why. It's just something that my gut is telling me. And so I want to go ahead and read the first book in that series to determine if that's the case. I don't like having all of these things out there on my virtual TBR still taking up brain space. Like it's always in the back of my mind. Oh yeah, I want to read that. I think I want to read that. I think I might want to continue with that. This is the way for me to make the ultimate determination about whether I do want to continue with Skyward. I also want to go ahead and read Fly Away. This is the second and final book in the Firefly Lane duology by Kristen Hanna. I love Kristen Hanna. She is one of my favorite authors of all time. I have read Firefly Lane twice now. It follows the friendship between Tully and Kate from when they were young teenagers up into adulthood and everything that they go through and all that they experience. And Firefly Lane is definitely not a cliffhanger type of book. It is not a story that needed a sequel, but I just loved the story and the beautiful depiction of friendship in there and I'm willing to read more with these characters. And so for that reason I did want to go ahead and read Fly Away as well. Similarly to Skyward I want to go ahead and read Aurora Rising by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman are the duo that wrote The Illuminae Files which was probably one of the most fantastic and unique reading experiences I've ever had. It's an epic space opera trilogy that follows different characters each time although there is some crossover between them and these books are told entirely in mixed media form. So even though they're chonky, they go by super quick because it's not standard formatting. And so Aurora Rising is another science fiction story by this duology. And since I loved the Illuminae Files so much, I absolutely want to go ahead and read Aurora Rising. This is another one that has just been on my radar for so, so long. And I believe all of the books in this series are already out. And so I'm way behind. So I need to go ahead and at least read the very first book so that I can determine if this is a series that I need to keep in my brain or if I can just go ahead and forget about it. I don't imagine that will be the case because of my love for Jay Kristoff especially and my love of the Illuminae Files. I have a feeling that they are going to do a great job with Aurora Rising and I absolutely want to give it a shot. And then the final book that I'm going to include formally in this video is A Vow So Bold and Deadly by Bridget Kemmerer. So this is the third and final book in her Curse Breakers trilogy and I need to finish it. I am very hesitant and trepidatious about finishing it. That is because when I read A Curse So Dark and Lonely it was a Beauty and the Beast retelling and I really enjoyed it but there was a relationship in there. It was a friendship between the main character Harper and Grey who was Ren, the love interest's 
like best friend and he was head of the guard and things like that. Harper and Gray developed this bond, this really intense, beautiful friendship. And I was really hoping to see that developed further in book two. I was actually hoping to see the series change course a little bit and maybe see Harper and Gray get together, but I didn't get that. The second book follows Gray, which I loved. I loved seeing the book entirely from Gray's perspective, but he gets his own love interest in that second book and I just don't like her. I just don't like her. And I didn't like the direction that the book heads. So I know that in book three, there's going to be a big conflict that arises between Gray and Ren. And I don't like that. Like, I don't want to not root for Harper, but I also don't want to not root for Gray. I want everything to turn out into this really happy ending. And I want to see Gray with Harper. And I just know that that's not going to happen. That is not in the cards. And that's the relationship that I want. That's the relationship that I'm invested in, even though there's never really been, I think, much of a hint that that was going to happen. Although I think that there is definitely some chemistry and connection between those two characters. And I wanted to see that explored so much further in the first two books. And it just wasn't. And so I'm worried about going into this. I'm worried about seeing the fighting. I'm worried about seeing where the relationships are going to go. And I'm especially worried because I know that I'm not going to get what I want out of this, but I still really enjoy this series. I love Bridget Kemmerer no matter what she writes. I really, really enjoy it. I also enjoy the new fantasy series that she started that I need to go ahead and read as well, but I need to go ahead and read this. And there's also a spinoff series that has recently come out and I have the first book for that as well. And so I need to go ahead and finish this so that I can start that spinoff series. All right, y'all, that is it. Those are the 23 books that I have definitely got to get to in 2023. Like I said, a lot of them are about lowering and curating my TBR, completing or catching up with series, starting books that have been on my mind for a long time that I just need to go ahead and start and determine whether or not I want to continue with those series or the author or things of that nature. So that's really what this is about. After I made my list for this video, I did come up with a couple of other books that I will probably add to it as well. But for now, these are officially the 23 books that I do plan for sure to get to in 2023. So please comment down below and let me know some of the books that you you are prioritizing in the year of 2023? Do you have a list like mine, 23 and 2023? Or what are you doing? Kind of prioritize the books that you absolutely want to get to. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already, because I would sure love to see you in my next video. Bye guys.